If we take the, the three central processes in assessment of making sure that you're clear about where the learner is going, you're clear about where they are, and you want to establish how to get there, uh, and you think about the role of the teacher, the role of the other peers in the classroom, and the learner themselves, you end up with five what we call key strategies. The first is the teacher's role in making sure that you know where the learner is through questioning, classroom tasks, dialogue, so it's finding out where the learner is. Then giving feedback to the students, and not feedback that tells them that they're doing okay or they're not doing okay. It's feedback that moves the learner forward. Then you have the role of peers. First of all, helping each other understand the success criteria. So the teacher helps clarify what it is the, le the lesson is about or the learning is about. And peers have a role in communicating that to each other as well. And then you have peers supporting each other what we call activating students as teaching resources for one another, and you have student self-assessment or activating students as, own, as owners of their own learning. And that brings in all the stuff about metacognition, all that stuff about managing your own emotional reaction to, to, to school and to work. And so we get this, this complex of, of ultimately five processes. There's the questioning, finding out where students are in their learning, the feedback that moves learners on, making sure that everybody concerned is clear about the success criteria, uh, student uh, peer assessment and student self-assessment. Those we think are the five key processes or key strategies of assessment for learning. So much so that we would say that if you're doing assessment for learning, you're doing at least one of those. And if you're not doing one of those, then you're not doing assessment for learning.